レインボーブリーチ俺は炎を自在に操る急に炎が黄色に何で紫すごいこれが This is a clip from a popular anime TV show, Dr. Stone at 10 minutes and 28 seconds, and so this is a great intro to what we're going to be talking about today. Now, contrary to popular belief, this is not a glitch in the matrix, rather if you had actually paid attention to 9th grade science class, you would immediately recognize the wonderful world of So, to further understand this topic, we gotta start small. Like, really small. Smaller than this four foot tall man child. Hi. That's right, it's time to talk about. We all know atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. However, today we will only focus on electrons in this phenomenon. When an atom is seated at a really high temperature, something suspicious will happen to its valence electrons. The electrons will Suspiciously absorb energy from heat and move to a higher excited energy level. However, there's just one teeny tiny little problem. This electron is unstable, so eventually it will fall back down, losing energy in the process. Eventually, what you'll get is a repeat cycle, resulting in a vibrating electron. Remember when we said this? This electron is unstable, so eventually it will fall back down, losing energy in the process. Alright, now that we're on the same page, when an electron falls back to its original layer, due to the law of conservation of energy, it will lose energy in the form of photons, or in other terms, light. Now, photons have both properties of particles and waves, meaning it has a wavelength. So what pops up in your mind after I mention light and wavelength? Colors! Bingo! We've all seen the colors of a rainbow, and colors exist due to the difference of wavelength in light. For example, the longer the wavelength, the more red it becomes. The shorter the wavelength, the more purple it becomes. So the descending order of wavelengths should be red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and finally, purple. Now, why does this matter, you may ask? Well, different elements emit different amounts of energy. For example, the higher the energy, the shorter the wavelength, and the lower the amount of energy, the longer the wavelength. For example, lithium ions emit lower amounts of energy, so a longer wavelength, so it produces a red flame. On the other hand, potassium ions emit higher amounts of energy, so a shorter wavelength, so it produces a lytic flame. And that is precisely the reason why flame tests are commonly used to differentiate metal ions and compounds. This is because they emit different colored lights. Alright, so now, we're going to show a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to initiate the flame test. First, dip a clean platinum wire into concentrated hydrochloric acid. It is what I would have said! However, after consulting with our chemistry teacher, she thought that letting six extremely simple-minded monkeys handle corrosive substances might not be the best idea ever. Cause, you know, we'd probably be too dangerous for us high schoolers. So... Step 1. Dip a Clean platinum wire into the compound to be tested like Chick-fil-A sauce. Then, heat it in a non-luminous flame, and voila! Sit back and see the magic. Flame tests are really important to us in our daily lives, whether it's for quick recognition of ions, making fireworks, or for educational purposes, just like this video right now. So, next time you see fireworks, just remember, it's only metal ions burning flames contained within high-grade explosives. That's all from us. Signing out.